Well, even though the NFL is getting a little bit more chaotic, my predictions keep on getting better. That probably won't last. Rossi Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to another episode of Packcast, the podcast where you don't. I did Packer Sam, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. 11 and 4 last week, not too shabby. Grassy. And today we are going to be breaking down all of the week seven games. Given my predictions, as I said last week, I went 11 and 4, which means I am 58 and 35 on the year. Here are the games I got right and wrong last week. And speaking of right and wrong, somebody who's picking a lot of games right is Camp Plays, our number one ranked person in the Pick'em League at 71 and 22. I know it's week seven, but you still can join the Pick'em League. It's completely free. Link is in the description and you'll probably beat me. Starting off with the Thursday night game, you got the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the New Orleans Saints. That Jaguars defense, after getting three interceptions on Minshew. I'll have you know I have the reflexes of a cat and the speed of a mongoose. Throw it. I dare ya. Impressive. And the Jaguars have been impressive for the past couple of weeks because I know their offense hasn't fully gelled yet. I know Trevor Lawrence is banged up right now, but it seems like he is going to be good to go for Thursday night football. But it's been the defense that has been the story. Josh Allen just causing problems, ton of pressures, getting after the QB. And I'm really liking the way that the defense of the Jaguars is kind of starting to form and become a bit of a powerhouse. So that is a nice surprise. And as I've been saying, if that Jaguars offense can take that next step, and really start humming, they're going to be a really damn good team. Meanwhile, the Saints losing to the Texans. And listen, you can look at Pete Carmichael. You can look at the offensive coordinator and say, hey, it's all his fault. But things are just not gelling on the offensive side of the ball. They had more yards. They had time of possession. They had everything going their way last week, and they still lost. Derek Carr is not looking great for them, and it just seems like that offense can't get out of its own way. And so looking at this game, I do believe in the Saints defense. It's pretty damn solid, but I'm going to give my tip of the hat to the Jaguars. I think they're just the better team here. Of course, this all depends on if Trevor Lawrence is going to play, but either way, I like Jacksonville's chances on Thursday night. Then you got the Vegas Raiders taking on the Chicago Bears. The Raiders, Josh McDaniels, you have now beaten Bill Belichick two years in a row. That's right. Now, say my name. And I don't really know how. The Raiders have climbed on back. They are now at 500 at 3-3. Three and three, And... Max Crosby, he's having a hell of a good season. And slowly but surely, the Raiders are just finding ways to win. Is it against really good teams? No, and yes, I'm putting the Packers in there. But at the end of the day, they are 3-3. Three and three. And I know lots of people have problems with Josh McDaniels. They're looking at that offense, and it should be producing more. But a win is a win. Meanwhile, the Bears... Nothing is going right for the Bears whatsoever. Not only did they lose last week against the Vikings, but on top of that, Justin Fields also has a dislocated finger. So he's going to be missing some time. We don't know how much yet, but it's just doom and gloom over in Chicago. The good news, you have the number one and number two overall pick. The bad news is it's only week seven and you're already thinking about the draft. And so while the defense did get better with the Bears because they did have some players return from injury, I just don't know if they're going to be able to win this game without Justin Fields. So I'm going to go with the Raiders here. I don't think this is going to be a particularly good game, but yeah, there you go, Raiders. Now you might be four and three. Following that, you got the Cleveland Browns taking on the Indianapolis Colts. The Browns, with one of the biggest upsets in recent memory, taking down the undefeated San Francisco 49ers, and they did it with P.J. Walker. And let's be very clear, their offense really wasn't too impressive, but their defense, they are the best defense in football. They may be historically good, and they were giving Brock Purdy problems all day. Throw in the refs, throw in the weather, throw in everything. Doesn't matter. The Browns on the defensive side of the ball are really, really damn good. Meanwhile, the Colts, 
Unfortunately, Anthony Richardson is going to miss the rest of the season as he is going to need surgery, which is a huge bummer because I just loved watching Anthony Richardson play and there was a lot of potential there. And instead, Gardner Minshew, as I mentioned, got the start and that did not go so well because Gardner Minshew, he was just staring down those receivers before throwing those interceptions. No, that's, we gotta be more subtle than that. I don't want them to know that we're thinking about them. What are you doing? What are you doing? You staring at them? And even though they did extend Jonathan Taylor, I don't know how much that's going to help this season. It seems like this season might already be a lost cause. And so because of that, I am going to go with the Browns. If Gardner Minshew had problems with the Jaguars defense, I can only imagine the problems that the Browns defense is going to bring him. So because of that, I got to go with Cleveland. Then you got an AFC East showdown. You got the Buffalo Bills taking on the New England Patriots. The Bills, Sunday Night Football against the Giants. What the hell was that? Yeah, they won, but it did not feel like a win. And for the second week in a row, the Bills offense has really not looked great. They started looking good at the end against the Jaguars in London, but against the Giants, they were just awful. They couldn't really move the ball, making mistakes, and it was just bleh. Meanwhile, the Patriots... And that offense right now? There's no strategy. I have no strategy. There's zero strategy. That might be even more blah. The Patriots losing once again, this time to the Raiders, as we were just talking about. And they're a team on offense that just really can't do anything right. And their defense is still solid. Don't get me wrong. It's not elite by any stretch, but it's still solid. And maybe you're going to have some shenanigans here because it's a divisional matchup. But I got to imagine the Bills are going to come out with a little bit more oomph against the Patriots. And to be honest, even though the Bills haven't looked great these past two weeks, I just trust them a hell of a lot more than the Patriots right now. So because of that, I got to go with Buffalo. Following that, you have an NFC East showdown between, oh no, the New Jersey Giants. That's right, you got that back. Taking on the Washington Commanders. Yeah, this is going to be a weird game. Let's get weird. Let's get weird. The Commanders coming off a win, defeating the Falcons, ending Desmond Ritter's undefeated home streak because that's all they do. They just end streaks, baby. And the Commanders, I like that team. Don't get me wrong. But Sam Howell needs to stop getting sacked. Whether it's the offensive line or whether it's him holding onto the ball too long, it's probably a combination of both. They just got to stop him from getting pulverized back there. I do like their defense, and I think that they have a ton of talent on the offensive side of the ball, whether it's with their ground game or the litany of receivers that they have. Meanwhile, the Giants actually put up a decent fight against the Bills, had multiple chances to win that game, but just could not get it done. Also decided to pass it on the one-yard line instead of run it. Where have I seen that before? The Giants are another team that are in desperate need of help. They are one of the worst teams in the league right now. And whether it's the terrible offensive line, which did granted look a little bit better with Terod Taylor back there. He didn't get sacked a kajillion times. And while their defensive line is good, again, I just don't trust that team enough. Saquon definitely, I think, will help. But going up against a strong defensive line of the Commanders, I don't think they're going to be able to win. So because of that, the Commanders take the dub. Then you got an NFC South showdown between the Atlanta Falcons and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And here we go again with Desmond Ritter. Falcons fans watching Desmond Ritter throw away that game last week. No! Oh! Yep, we have to have that combo again. It just seems like every other week, it's like, oh, are we keeping Desmond Ritter? Oh, he looks pretty good. Never mind, he doesn't look great. Oh, he looks okay. Oh, never mind, he doesn't look good. And I feel like that's gonna be a thing all season. Now, I will give him some slack because, again, he is pretty much a rookie, only started a handful of games last season, and it's only week seven now. So I think he just needs time to gel. Hell, look at Kyle Pitts attempting a touchdown dance. That needed work too. Well, then again, they never throw him the ball anyway. But the Falcons do have a really good run game and they have a pretty sturdy defense. And so who knows? Maybe they'll still be vying for a playoff spot at the end of the year, though it will definitely be a wild card spot. Meanwhile, the Buccaneers, a disappointing showing on offense. Mike Evans struggled. Just basically that entire offense struggled against the Lions, who to their credit have a very good defense and they showed out not just their defense, but also their fans. And the Buccaneers, I mean... I think they are a solid football team. I think they're good enough to win their division, maybe even a wild card game, but I don't think they're going much further than that. So I am going to pick the Buccaneers to get the win in a very close game against the Falcons, and let's see if they can bounce back 
after losing to Detroit. Then, oh, you got a potential game of the week. You got the Detroit Lions taking on the Baltimore Ravens. And I just have a feeling this is going to be a fun one. This is going to be a great test for both teams. The Lions coming off a big win, as we were just talking about, against the Buccaneers. The Ravens, it wasn't a big win, but they did win against the Titans. And good God, the script writer for that game? Let's see. It was the best of times. It was the blurst of times. You stupid monkey. <laughs> it was just all field goals. The Ravens really did not look good. Their defense looked pretty darn solid, but it's tough to evaluate if they looked good or the Titans offense just looked really, really bad. Also could be both. Justin Tucker, of course, was the hero of that game. And I do like what their defense is doing right now. And I think it's going to provide some interesting challenges for Jared Goff, who absolutely tore it up against the Buccaneers. And this should be a very, very good game. Being played in Baltimore, I'm excited to see two defenses duke it out and which offense can get an edge. I'm actually going to go with the Ravens for an upset here. I've been rocking with Detroit and picking them for a lot of these games, of course, except against the Packers. But I do think the Ravens might just have the defense and a mobile QB that will be enough to get over the hump and beat the Lions. Though I will say, if the same Ravens team that showed up against the Titans team shows up against Detroit, they're going to get their ass kicked. So I am going to go with the Ravens in a close, close game. And let's see if the Blue Kitty will go meow nevermore. Then you got the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the LA Rams. This is going to be an interesting game. The Steelers returning from their bye week to see that everybody in their division won and it's just chaos. They had a much-needed bye week. Their offense, again, still not super impressive. However, before they went on the bye week, Kenny Pickett was like, I'm just going to audible out of everything and actually made some really nice throws. And so maybe that offense can start finding a rhythm. Of course, we know how good their defense is. Meanwhile, the Rams coming off a big win against the Cardinals. Cooper Cup is back in full swing. But the real story has been about Kyron Williams, the running back for the Rams, who really has been tearing it up lately and has been looking pretty damn good. And the Rams are kind of a surprise team this season. I don't think a lot of people anticipated them doing really well this year, but they're turning some heads. This is going to be a nice challenge for them because they're going up against a very good defense. And of course, the Rams do have three very good receivers. So I think it's going to be an interesting game. I am going to pick the Rams to get the win just because I think the Rams can outscore the Steelers. Though, the Steelers, if they play lockdown defense, I think they have a decent chance at winning. But I am going to tip my hat to L.A. Following that, you have an NFC West showdown between the Arizona Cardinals and the Seattle Seahawks. It's a bird party. Okay, maybe that wasn't a party. The Cardinals coming off a tough loss in which they didn't even score 10 points against the LA Rams. And the Cardinals, listen, they fight. They're not the worst team in the league. I know they only have one win, but they're fighters. And I have to respect that. I like Dobbs a lot. It just seems like the Cardinals do not have the roster right now to be competitive. I know people are upset with their defensive coordinator. And I have a feeling that it might look like this for the rest of the way. Meanwhile, the Seahawks losing a tough game. Their defense did everything it should. They locked down Jamar Chase, but their offense only scoring once out of five red zone attempts. Their red zone offense was basically non-existent and they're gonna have to get better. Now, they should be able to beat the Cardinals. I don't think they will have too many problems. Though again, it is a divisional game, so you never know. The Cardinals could play them pretty tough, but it's being played in Seattle. I think this will be a nice bounce back game for the Seahawks, and because of that, they get the win. And then... You have what the world has been waiting for. The GPS Bowl. Brandon Perna and I will be streaming this game the first time ever. We will be streaming the Green Bay Packers taking on the Denver Broncos. The Packers coming off a bye week, and I swear, if Matt LaFleur loses us this game... you and your eyebrows. No, but seriously, you better not lose. Aaron Jones better be given 32 carries because the Broncos defense 
It is not good. And this should be a get right game for the Packers. But then again, I said the exact same thing against the Raiders. The Packers though, just they have the talent, but they have just been so inconsistent. They have no run game when Aaron Jones is not available. On top of that, Jordan Love did not look good these past couple of weeks ever since the Detroit game. And so you do have to wonder, okay, What kind of offense is going to show up? The defense definitely did enough to win that game against the Raiders, but they couldn't get it done, except for the one time that Devontae Adams was going against Preston Smith, but we don't talk about that anymore. Meanwhile, the Broncos... They held their own for a little bit against the Chiefs. Their defense played a little bit better. So much so that you wonder if maybe the numbers are a little bit skewed because the Dolphins dropped 70 on them. But their offense then didn't show up. And I just feel like that's been the story of the Broncos this season. When one side of the ball shows up, the other doesn't. Now with Russell Wilson having a bad game against the Chiefs, he already had a bad game against the Jets. I don't know what's going to happen, but maybe a change is a coming. But I am going to pick the Packers to get the win. I do think they are the more talented football team. We'll see what Matt LaFleur schemes up against the Broncos. But yeah, please Packers, don't let me down. Following that, you have an AFC West showdown between the LA Chargers taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chargers losing a heartbreaker on Monday Night Football against the Dallas Cowboys. And we can look at Brandon Staley and the dumb decisions that he made, whether it wasn't to take the points with the field goal, or we could look at the offense just not playing to its potential. Justin Herbert struggled and really couldn't get much going against that Cowboys defense. Meanwhile, the Chiefs... A little bit surprising because everybody expected them to destroy the Broncos. Uh, Excuse me, what are you doing? I'm giving you the beating of your life. But at the end of the day, of course, they did get the W. The Chiefs and Chargers games are always weird. It sometimes comes down to the last minute. This actually could be a high-scoring game. Rasheed Rice is starting to develop a little bit more and come into his own. And so maybe that can solve their receiver problem. Of course, Travis Kelsey is always going to be Travis Kelsey. But I am going to pick the Chiefs to get the win in Arrowhead. And Chargers, if it makes you feel any better, you probably won't lose by three this time. It'll probably be more. Then, finally... We've made it again a good primetime game on Sunday Night Football. You got the Miami Dolphins taking on the Philadelphia Eagles. And looking at this matchup. Ooh, wee. It's going to be a good one. But then again, every time I say that about a primetime game, I get cursed and it's terrible. The Dolphins coming off a big win against the Panthers. Even though they went down 14-0 early, they rallied back and wound up winning 42-21. And the only reason that other touchdown was scored by the Panthers was because their backup threw a pick six. So the Dolphins, they are firing on all cylinders. Their offense is historically good. Tyreek Hill is likely to break the wide receiver record. And yeah, they're feeling themselves right now. Meanwhile, the Eagles, a tough loss against the Jets. And listen, Jalen Hurts did not look good. Three interceptions. On top of that, there was also an additional fumble, and the offense just couldn't get it going. Now, they were missing some players on the defensive side of the ball, so I think that definitely hurt, but their offense has to gel better. And you do wonder why they're not just running the ball more. Maybe it was because it was against an elite defense like the Jets, but here against the Dolphins, they don't have that elite defense. It's good, but it is not elite, so they should be able to find success running the ball, looking at you, DeAndre Swift. And so this game, I'm really, really excited for. You have the Dolphins going up against a really good defense. And before Matt Milano got hurt with the Bills, the Bills were able to shut down the Dolphins. But considering there are still some lingering injuries, I am going to go with the Dolphins here to get the win. I just don't believe their offense can be slowed down until I see it again. And I think Mike McDaniel had this game circled for a while because who knows, this could be a potential Super Bowl matchup. And so I'm going with Miami, though I anticipate this might be a barn burner. And then finally, you got the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Minnesota Vikings. The 49ers, as we talked about, suffering a loss, their first loss, snapping their 16 consecutive win streak against the Cleveland Browns. And listen, everything went wrong for the 49ers on Sunday. The weather was bad. Brock Purdy played terrible. Christian McCaffrey got hurt. Debo Samuel got hurt. Trent Williams got hurt for a hot second. And just nobody really played well. So throw all that together. 
As I said before, I don't think that's going to happen on a week-to-week basis. And now they're going to return even more angry. And it seems that they dodged a bullet because CMC and Debo Samuel's injuries don't seem to be significant. So we'll see if they wind up playing on Monday night. Meanwhile, the Vikings... Their defense, they looked pretty good against the Bears, but that's the only reason why they won that game. Their offense does not look good at all. And while Madison is getting a lot of targets and a lot of carries, not doing a whole lot with it. That loss of Justin Jefferson definitely hurts their offense. And while Addison performed well and still had a touchdown this past Sunday, I just do not believe in the Vikings right now. I imagine Vikings fans seeing that they're playing the 49ers in primetime on Monday night this week. The end is near! We are all gonna die! And so the 49ers should get the win here, defeat the purple incarnation of Satan, and send us all home happy. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. Who do you got winning these games? Let me know. You know, I saw me at Tom Grassy Comedy. All social media is seen down below. A big shout and thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members for the extra support on this channel. And thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassy. And as always, go Pack Go.